28. Unconstructive Religion Calcedon Report No. 362, September 1995 During the many years of my life, I have more than a few times been disappointed in men whose knowledge at first glance made them notable. Their problem was a past-bound vision. Their focus was on the early church, or the medieval church, or the Reformation church, and so on and on. If their interest was political, they often looked backward to a particular era in history. Now, such interests can be good, but too often such people idealise the past and want to return to something no longer tenable. The modernists, on the other hand, wants a continual revision of the content of the faith in terms of the spirit of the age. Those of us who hold that it is God's inscriptured word that is alone authoritative must recognise that it must transform and govern our todays and tomorrows. We have broken with Christ the King if we are not future-oriented in terms of the whole of God's law word. Our Lord commands our priorities with these words. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. The goal is also set forth. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Our focus must be on his kingdom, not on a past or present church. To make the church our priority is to become implicit humanists. There are too many people who believe that, because they are in the, quote, right church, end quote, all is well with their souls for time and eternity. Our Lord, in the parable of judgment, speaks of his judgments on those who call him Lord and declare themselves to be his people. He declares, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick? or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 to 46. On our own, none of us would dare to make so strong a statement, but our Lord made it. Today, church members are giving a decreasing amount to all forms of benevolence, as well as in their gifts to their local church. They seem to believe that by a profession of faith, some attendance to church, and a minimal giving, they have brought fire and life insurance from Jesus Christ, the super-agent, if this parable means what it so plainly says, we are in trouble. Ours is an unconstructive or non-constructive religion which will pay us off with judgment. Our Lord tells us, By their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20 And his brother James declares, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James chapter 2, verse 26. We are not here to please ourselves, but to please and to serve our triune God. We live in an age of disintegration. The opportunities have never been greater, perhaps, to meet our Lord's mandate. But too many churches are quibbling over trifles. They are angry if the pastor preaches the Ten Commandments, angry if he stresses doctrine instead of catering to this or that group, and hostile if he strives to please God rather than man. Of such a person, David said, There is no fear of God before his eyes. 
Psalm 36, verse 1. Because of the crisis of our times, God is giving us one of the greatest opportunities in all of history to be effectual, to have a major impact on men and nations, and to become constructive believers, not empty and hollow men. We cannot all go out to do what many are doing on Chalcedon staff and in various churches and organisations, but we can pray and we can give. Read again Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 to 46. What will we say when we face him? 